hello guys welcome back to my channel please remember to like and subscribe today we're going to be looking at the csec january 2020 paper 2 and that is in mathematics now we're going to get right into it as you can see my first question is already open and says using a calculator otherwise calculate the exact value of the following now we're going to go otherwise we're going to go the long way now of course you can put all this inside the calculator one time you get an answer you simply write it down but let us see what would happen if we were to go otherwise. Now it says 4 and 1 fifth times 1 third minus 1 and a quarter. Now we all know by the, well, by the order of operation, which I like to go as bead mass, right? where the I stands for indices, we're going to have to do multiplication before we do subtraction. All right. So what I'm gonna first gonna do to make this a bit easier is to change all the fractions to improper fractions. So this is gonna imply four and one fifth, which means that I'm gonna multiply five by four, which is twenty, and I'm gonna add the numerator, which is one. So I'm gonna have twenty-one over five times one third minus one and one one and a quarter. So I'm gonna have four times one plus one, which is five over four. Now, since I'm doing the multiplication first, I'm going to look for what can be reduced. I know that 3 can go into 21. So I can say 3 into 3 goes 1 time. 3 into 21 goes 7 times. So this becomes 7 times 1, which is 7, over my denominator, which is 5 times 1, which is 5, minus 5 over 4. Now that I'm going to subtract, I'm going to have to find the LCM of my denominators, which are 5 and 4. Now, the LCM of 5 and 4 is 20. So we say 5 into 20 goes 4. I will multiply that 4 by my 7. So here, let me just put, change the color here. I'm going to have 4 times 7. And we're gonna also going to say 4 into 20, which is 5. I'll multiply that 5 by an numerator there. So I'm going to end up with 4 times 7, which is 28. Minus 5 times 5, which is 25. And 28 minus 25 is 3 over 20. we we'll always check to see if the answer can be broken down further. But in this case, it can't. So that is where we stop. So my answer is 3 over 20. Now, this is part 2 of my question. I have 4.1 minus 1.25 squared all over 0 0.05. Once again, by bid mass, we know we have to do index before we can do subtraction. And we have to work out the entire numerator before we can even think about the denominator. So I'm going to go right ahead. Using my calculator, I will have to find the index arm first, which is 1.25 squared. So I'm going to have 1.25 squared, which turns out to be 1.5625. So I'm going to have 4.1 minus 1.5625. All over 0 0.005 now this implies so now we can take my numerator which is 4.1 and we subtract the 1.5625 which is gonna give me 2.5375 all over 0 0.005 so 0 0.005 now we divide that we can use our calculator this turns out to be exactly 507.5. All right, and that's my that's my answer there. Now we are down to part B of question one. It says a stadium currently has a seating capacity of 15,400 seats. So that is also the amount of persons the stadium can hold. It says calculate the number of people in the stadium when 75% of the seats are occupied. So, when 75% of the seats are occupied, 75% of the capacity would actually be at the stadium. Now, we know how percentage works. Percentage is out of 100. So, I want to find out what 75% of 15,400 is. So, I'm going to have 75 over 15. Yeah, sorry. That would be 75 over 100. Percentage is out of 100 times 15,400. All right, now there are certain things we can do here. Like we can reduce the zero, so make it easier. So that takes out that, that takes out that. So what I'm really gonna be left with is 75 times 150. And that is gonna be 11,550. 
So therefore, 11,550 seats are occupied when 75% is there, or 75% of the stadium is present. Part 2 of my question says the stadium is to be renovated with a new seating capacity of 20,790 seats. After the renovation, what will be the percentage increase in the number of seats? Now, in order for me to approach this question, we need to remember how many seats were originally there. So, initially, we had 15,400 seats. So, I'm going to have to find the increase. So, in this case, we can say increase. In number of seats equal 20,790 minus 15,400. Alright, this is going to give me which is 5,390. So that was the amount of seats that the capacity would have been increased by. However, we want this as a percentage. And to calculate the percentage, we have to put this amount over the original seating capacity because that is where it would have increased from. The original seating capacity was 15,400. So I'm going to have 5,390 over the original seating capacity, which is 15,400 times percentage is out of 100. So I'm going to multiply that by 100. All right. Once again, we can use our zeros. We can eliminate the zeros there. So I'm going to have 5,390 divided by 154. And we'll simply just put that in our calculator. This becomes 35. And this would be 35% as percentage is out of 100. So you can even write a statement saying, that therefore, the percentage increase in the number of seats is 35. All right. Let's move to the next question. Now, part C of question 1 says that neon light flashes five times every 10 seconds show that the light flashes 43,200 times in one day now let us start out about a day one day has 24 hours we know that so in one day we have 24 hours now what i want to know is how many seconds are there in a day now hours can be broken down to minutes by multiplying by 60 and then it can be further broken down into seconds by multiplying by a further 60 so this breaks down to be 24 times 60 times 60 which is 86,400 seconds in a day all right you could just simply just write a statement there now we are hearing that this thing flashes five times every 10 seconds so we need to find out how many 10 seconds there are in 86,400 so what we simply do is simply just divide that by 10. So the number of 10 seconds would be equal to 86,400 divided by 10. Which of course, you know, in this case, we divide by 10. That's just going to be 8,640. Right? That is the amount of 10 seconds that you have in a day. But of course, in every 10 seconds, the light flashes 5 times. So I'm going to have to multiply the number of 10 seconds by 5. So this becomes, can, so we can say the number of flashes in a day, just write a statement there, would be equal to 8,640 multiplied by 5. So 8,640 multiplied by 5, which is 43,200. There we go. Now, there is a next way we could have looked at this question. If it flashes five times every 10 seconds, it means that it flashes every two seconds. Right? Because five times every 10, in 10 seconds, if you divide 10 by 5, we end up with two seconds. So we could have simply found the amount of seconds in a day, which is 86,400. We simply divide that by 2. I would have gotten 43,200. So whichever way seems simpler to you, you can take that approach. All right? Let's move on to the next question. Now, we're moving on to question 2A. And in this case, it says factorize the following expression. Now, bear in mind what factorization is. When we factorize an expression, we write it as a product of factors. So we're going to be looking for what is common so we can take it out. 
In my first case, we have 5 h squared minus 12 h g. And we can normally start with the numbers 5 and 12. The only thing they have in common is 1. We don't need to factor out a 1 because that's a multiplicative identity. Now let's look at the h. On one side, we have h squared. On the other side, we have h. So we can agree that an h is common. These are not common, so we can ignore that for now. So we would actually take out an h. If we take out an h out of h squared, by laws of indices, all I would have left is h. The 5 was untouched, so we're going to have 5h minus the h is gone from the right as well, so we have 12g. This can't go any further, so that is the end of that question. For my next question, we have a quadratic expression. So we have 2x squared minus x minus 6. Now, in this case, we're going to use what is called an AC method, where A is 2, C is minus 6. So we're going to have 2 times minus 6, which is going to give me minus 12. Now, the way this works is that we want two terms. When we multiply them, we get a minus 12. But when we add them, we get a minus 1, which is my B term. So let us see. Could we use 4 and 3? So I would have to use a negative 4 and a positive 3. So we rewrite the middle term. So we're going to have 2x squared minus 4x plus 3x minus 6. Right? You know, once we have four terms, in order to factorize them, we have to do a bit of grouping. So we can group these two. We can group those two. So we're going to be looking for what is common between the different pairs. So here we have 2x squared minus 4x. For the numbers which are 2 and 4, we can take out a 2. We have x squared and we have x, so we can take out the x. So we have a 2x out there. If I take out 2 and x, I'm going to be left with x here. And if I take out 2, the x is gone. 2 into 4 is 2, so I have x minus 2 here. With my second pair, the x is not common, so we can ignore that totally. But we have 3 and 6. All right, so we can factor out a 3, which is going to leave me with an x. 3 into 6 is 2, and x minus 2. Now, here's a way to know if you're on the right path. If what we have in both brackets are the same thing, which is x minus 2 and x minus 2. So we can go ahead and factor out the bracket, which is an x minus 2. Bracket, the bracket is also common in this case. And I'll be left with 2x plus Three. All right, and that is how we factorize that expression there. All right, we're looking at part B of a question. So it says solve the equation r plus 3 equal 3 into r minus 5. Now, with a question like this where we have r on both sides, what we want to do is to do some grouping. But as it is, we can't just start grouping here. We're going to have to get rid of the brackets. So here, so we can say that this implies r plus 3 equal, if we expand that bracket, using the distributive law, we're going to have 3 times r, which is 3r, minus 3 times 5, which is 15. Now, we want all the r's on one side. We can choose whichever side we want to take the r's to. We can choose to take them to the right, or we can choose to take them to the left. Now, let us say we're going to take this 3r over to the left. It's a positive 3r, which means that in order to get rid of it from that side, I'm going to have to subtract. But to keep the balance in the equation, we subtract it from both sides. So we have r minus 3r, we put by the plus 3, is equal to 3r minus 3r minus 15. Now r minus 3r is going to give me a negative 2r plus 3 equal negative 15. I want r by itself now, so I'm going to have to get rid of the positive 3. So since it's positive, we can subtract it from both sides. So it's negative 2r plus 3 minus 3 equal negative 15 minus 3. This becomes negative 2r equal negative 15 minus 3. That's going to be negative 18. Now, how do I get r? The negative 2 is multiplying the r. So to get rid of that minus 2, I'm going to have to divide both sides by a negative 2. So therefore r would be equal to a positive 9. Part C says make the k the subject of the formula. Now, we're going to be transposing for k. 
it's the same thing as saying that we're going to be solving for k. Now, when you see 2a and 3t, all we need to do is think of them as numbers. So it might seem like a complex formula, but really and truly, a and t and k simply represent just numbers. So just think of 5, 6, or anything you want to think of. Now, we have 2a equal pi k squared plus 3t. My aim is to get k to be the subject of the formula. So I'm going to have to get rid of everything else. Now, the first thing to go would have been the 3t. And since we're adding, we're going to have to subtract 3t from both sides. So this is going to imply 2a minus 3t equal pi k squared plus 3t minus 3t. Good. So this becomes 2a minus 3t equal pi k squared. Of course, you would notice that we can't do anything about the 2a and the minus 3t because they are what we call unlike terms. Now we have the pi k squared. I'm going to have to get rid of the pi next. The pi is multiplying the k squared, so we know we divide both sides by pi. So I would end up with 2a minus 3t over pi equal k squared. We don't want k squared, we want k. So we're going to have to get rid of the square. Now bear in mind, the opposite of the square is the square root. So I'm going to have to square root both sides. So the square root will take out the square. So I'm going to have the root of 2a minus 3t over pi equal k. And ensure that the root comes all the way down. All right, and we can go ahead and say, therefore, k is equal to the square root. So my final answer, I could say, therefore, k equal the square root 2a minus 3t over pi. All right? And that is how we make k the subject of the formula. Let's move on to the next one. Question D of part 2. And this says, a farmer plants two crops, potatoes and corn on a 10 hectare piece of land. The number of hectares of corn planted C, so C represents the number of hectares of corn planted, must be twice, at least twice, the number of hectares of potatoes P planted. Write two inequalities to represent the scenario above. Now, the first thing we know is that in all, he has 10 hectares of land. So the amount of hectares of corn and the amount of hectares of potatoes cannot exceed the amount of hectare of land is either going to be less or equal to it. So the first thing we know is that the number of hectares of corn, which is C, plus the number of hectares of corn, which is, oh well, potatoes, sorry, which is P, cannot exceed 10 hectares of land because that is the amount of land he has. So it's either going to be less than or equal to 10. That is my first inequalities. Now it says the number of hectares of corn, which is C. So C must be at least twice. What does at least mean? It means it's going to be that or greater than. So it's going to be greater than or equal to the number of hectares of potatoes, which is P. So when you see terms like at least, it means that or more. All right, our P is the least it can be. So that would be my two inequalities that represents the following scenario.